The Monongahela National Forest spans much of the eastern third of West Virginia. It is a federally protected area, comprising of 921,000 acres, 115,000 of which are designated into several wilderness areas. While all of this state is a part of Appalachia, it is here in this region that makes one realize why West Virginia's nickname is indeed the Mountain State. Some of the most dramatic views in West Virginia are found here, within the boundaries of the National Forest, part of the Allegheny Mountain Range, which make up the central and western sections of the expansive Appalachian Mountains. It is in this eastern third of West Virginia where a large number of the state's Sasquatch encounters take place. So this is where we chose to explore. Stopped at a little uh, little country store here. We've got homemade pepperoni roll. That's obviously a big thing in West Virginia. Are pepperoni rolls? I think the history is uh, some guy used to sell them outside of the mines. It was just an easy way to pack a bunch of stuff into one little package. So let's give it a try. Super simple. It's just a roll. It's a pepperoni in the middle. That's it. We got our bud Jonathan Dodd here. What's up? You guys will know him from all the different art he's done. I mean, he does some amazing art, but he's done some some cool stuff for us. I'll show them on the screen. There are over 4,000 documented caves throughout West Virginia, with the majority of them located in the eastern third of the state, paralleling the mountains. Large deposits of karst throughout the mid to southern sections of the Appalachian Mountains have led to the prevalence of such caves. Over the years, some folks have alluded to creatures like Sasquatch possibly residing in these vast cave systems or even using them as a way to travel between locations. We visited Smokehole Caverns near Seneca Rocks. While being commercially run, these caverns were quite impressive and expansive.
Given the prevalence of caverns in West Virginia, for something a little more on the wild side, we visited one of many self-guided cave systems in the state. Got some kind of cave here, guys. What do you guys think of caves in general? It's gonna be spooky. Creeped out? A little creeped out by it. Being enclosed in a dark space. Is there creatures that live in there? You're scared of that? Yeah, I don't, I don't like that. I don't mind it. I don't, it's kind of safe. Eli embraces the subterranean nature of the world. Oh, here it is. Whoa. You okay? Yeah. Can you go in a little bit? Oh, it's a... Oh, dude, look at this guy. So Jonathan and I just went down into this river. Eli was up here. He didn't want to go further without us. I guess there's an even further room that goes deeper in here. It's so nice and cold in here. Man. Just a little crawl. Yeah, it's not too bad. <laughs> oh God. Guys, what do we think about all these caves and stuff in here? Just keep going. Keep going. And what's crazy is, right, you've got these kinds of caves all over the place here. I mean, imagine something coming in here and hiding. You could hide in here until nightfall when it knows people aren't going to come in and get out easily. Hide in here for a few hours, you know, I don't know. Whoa. We made it, boys. What'd you think? Pretty awesome, dude. So cool. Now look at this. Lush environment out here. Even a few days of total darkness is enough to cause temporary vision loss in human beings. It seems unlikely that something like Sasquatch might be able to reside in cave systems for long periods of time without any sort of light or fire perhaps as a temporary escape from the weather, while sticking close to the entrance, but other than that, the subterranean world underneath largely seems uninhabited by anything much aside from daring humans. Caves are by their nature both mysterious and frightening to us, so there is no doubt they will continue to inspire stories of strange, cave-dwelling creatures and underground passages connecting our world on the surface to that below.
So right now we are on our way to meet up with Les Odell, West Virginia researcher. Um, I think he does a pretty good job. He covers this kind of northern part of West Virginia here. He's been featured in a lot of other STM stuff over the years, uh, including Mothman Legacy, Dark Skies. He actually has been looking into Bigfoot reports for a long time, but also has a lot of other weirder stories. Les has been looking into a lot of the weirder stories in West Virginia as well, but he knows a lot of Bigfoot stories in this region too that we're in, kind of um, the uh, Monongahela National Forest area. So we're gonna be spending the next few days here with Les and checking out an area of interest. Should be pretty cool just being in such an area. Some people call this area and like spruce and stuff, they call it Little Canada because it gives them that feel of being like in Canada or the Pacific Northwest and, and whatnot there. There's a lot of mountain laurel, a lot of spruce pine, and there's several that's been reported to BFRO. I've taken a few, but there's also some that you can find online that people talk about. One of the oldest ones I found online was from this area. It was in 1960. A group of campers were, were in, at their site, I guess later in the evening and one of the fellows was off to the side. He was chopping up firewood to get the fire started. And he has his back toward the wooded area and he feels a poke in his ribs and he thinks it's one of his buddies messing around and he turns around and he's looking at this seven to eight foot tall creature, dark collared and he large, large red eyes. And it's a hairy creature and it turns and runs. Well, that's just been a story that I've heard a few times and found online. But then I took a report from a lady, anonymously, she sent it through e an email. Uh, she didn't even give me her name, but it was in the same area, pretty much in the same area. It was in 1970, and her and her husband were driving along, and I guess it was in front of the, it walked in the front of the truck, and that's what she talks about. It had big red eyes. I've heard it called, they call it the Canyon Monster, because I guess, you know, this being the area where it's at. And then I took another one, deciding took place in 2014, and it was on the road leading from where we're at down into the Parsons area. This lady was driving, going to work, and this thing walks across the road in front of her across the guardrail, and it, it, it was a strange shape. She said, she called it a, like a black Grinch, like the Grinch from you know, Stole Christmas, and had like a very big gut and, and real shiny black hair, and walking on two feet, and went across the guardrail, then over the hill. Time to get in. <laughs> oh, we are now seeking refuge in here. What do you think? It's it's gonna be a long one. Is it? Hopefully not. What are those? my crocs you got a stick in them <laughs> it's, tac <laughs> it's tactical dude pardon the flash it's your poncho i don't know man. what do you guys want to do i'm just getting, <laughs> getting uh, you know well this is what you're missing just rain been raining for the past uh, two hours. Let's see, I want to check on my tent real quick. Let's see if I can sleep in it because I am not, I am not I'm trying to sleep in the car. Man, that is not my mission objective. <laughs> Uh, sprinkles, but nothing's terribly wet. Hell yeah, I'm sleeping in here, man. This is 
Les Odell's set up here. It's coming down. Huh? It's coming down. I don't Jonathan had a good idea What's that? about pulling the cars up to each other. You just pull the cars up with the ends up, put the cable underneath, and then start cooking underneath the We do that too. Just may want to angle this so like you put this guy sideways like that. So we gave up on the fire? I mean, I guess. For the, <laughs> for the moment. I've got a lighter. It's a small lighter. Right here. Oh, you got one? <whistles> Giving us the light we need. I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened. Status update. Finished eating. Now we're gonna go squatching, I guess. The rain has, has stopped. Oh yeah, <laughs> ain't, ain't no more rain. <laughs> sit, no sit, more rain. What's the sit rep? No more rain, we're going squatching. Heck yeah, that's what I like to hear, boys. I think the sound's gonna be hooked up with the thing. Yeah, we gotta, if we film any of this, it's gotta be with a phone <laughs> for now. All right, I'm filming. All right, cool. So, uh, what's the idea here? Are we just going to go into this kind of marshy area back here? Well, well, we'll go. There's a marsh. We'll go through it, cross a little creek, then it'll be another small part of the marsh, and then we'll get into uh, a small pine forest and then into hardwood. And there's uh, some stuff over there that I found. Cool. And you I guys see. have heard a scream out here before. Yeah, we heard uh, like a, when I say a scream, but like a howl. Mm. Um, it, uh, he came after my son was chopping wood and we were just hanging out and we heard it and it was long drawn out like you typically hear like from the Ohio hounds stuff like that mm. and uh then it just coyotes everywhere went crazy and the next day i went over and that's when i found the big rock stack and stuff oh okay is that stack still there as far as i know i haven't been back oh okay all right sweet i'm gonna run audio audio is rolling have that if we hear anything we stop Hopefully the audio should pick it up, but uh, we got, I got a Pulsar. He's got some night vision going on. Jonathan has the other, um, the AGM thermal. So we got two thermals. Eli's got uh, psionics night vision as well. So I, mean, I think we got pretty good coverage in case something happens or we see any kind of critter. Yeah. Even though it is after the rainfall, we should be able to see something. So yeah. we've got this light to let us know where we need to head back. Entry back in here. Perfect. It's pretty thick along through here. Yeah. And that trail's not very big, so we'll take it right out there and Sweet. set it down and see if we can see our way back. Perfect. There it is, the light to find our way back home. What does it look like? Look, you see right through there? It might just be the head of something sticking out. See that shiny bit? Uh, oh. So now it's gone. Oh, I did. I saw it disappear. Maybe. Weird. It was way back there, huh? But it, yeah, I mean, it's far back there. I don't know how deep that is. I can still see it on a thermal. Mm -hmm. I can see a fog. 
Yeah, it's, it's not looking at us anymore. Can you see it with that there still? You can see it with this guy. Yeah. Sick. Hey, you want to see it, Jonathan? Yeah. Yeah, man, see. Oh, it just ran off. Oh, psych, just kidding. I got it walking off, though. Oh, wow. That was, that's because of the beaver dam up there. Yeah. A lot. You said it's been two years? Yeah, it's been two years. What is it? The water getting off the blow. Oh. But, you know, at least we're both able to confirm two separate uh, thermal wow. units. Wait, lantern went out. No doubt. Less is the real deal. He'll get you out. In the middle of some marsh, middle of nowhere. Put the light out, and he manages to find a way. Huh. Well, we, didn't, we didn't really hear much, but Jonathan, what did you think of uh, being out in there in the bush? Pretty wild. Uh, wet. Definitely very wet. Um, went up into some laurel a little bit. Um, but we couldn't get too deep into there. Yeah. It was really, really thick. find the uh, rocks we couldn't find last night? Yeah, I figured after the failure in Darkling Coast, <laughs> we'll try it again today. Try it in the daytime, yeah, we yeah. get to see the, the whole environment in, in a different, different light, so yeah. that should be interesting. Yeah, okay. right. maybe we'll find the opening to get in there. Because you can see some rock kind of things over there, so well, I guess we'll see. Yeah, I don't know. I, I just didn't know where that opening was to get in there, and it's been two years, and that in the fog and stuff. I, I, yeah. My light wasn't helping much. So. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. All right, sounds Check good. It. Let's do it. Some, I mean, bear digging for grubs. I don't know. That is weird. You can see it's just you know, impressions or anything. That looks kind of big something down digging. Down. Yeah. I mean, I've seen bear digs like this before, but you wouldn't be doing that with us at camp. And it's pretty fresh. Look right, do you see this? Yeah, reef I don't know. Maybe we just didn't see it. Ah, uh, yeah. That's a possibility. It could have been uh, yesterday before we got here. Who knows? I mean, well, no, because we walked down here yesterday in the daylight. Did we? Oh, you guys did? All of us did. Remember when we first got here? You walked out and said, I'm not going to go any further because I have my tennis shoes on. Oh, that's right. Yeah, we And did. I don't remember so seeing this then. Yeah, you're right. Huh. Maybe while we were out on our trek. Maybe. Somebody stopped by camp. That's kind of odd. <laughs> well, 
See if we get any impressions maybe coming out from over there. crossed up there and it's got to be over that way hmm. because this is you can see you can see in the daylight that there, there's just no tree line there yep. and where I was at the trees were bigger taller like over here yeah so uh, yeah sweet Got some kind of bed right here. Look at that. Something was laying there. If there was uh, any hair or anything in here, can't find. I can't see much, but something definitely laid there. Oh, you got the found the tape. There's the tape. Yes. The tape. Sick. Told you we'd find it. Oh yeah? Told him. Found Les's tape two years ago. Two or three years ago? At least two. Oh, it's worn down to the nub too. Yeah. I don't I don't know if we even got this far like to the right. Looks like he's located it. Oh, this is the oh the rock stand. Oh. So that's weird. It's like a 50-50 human yeah. or something. Yeah. Human-like. Bear's not going to do that. No. But Shoot. you see what we have to get through to get here, which is strange. Because it's I mean, possible, but. I mean, it's weird. Yeah. It's it's a couple mile hike that way from that direction. Yeah, it's. You yeah. know. That's what we're saying. It's like, you know, what's the motivation to be over here? We obviously have a motivation. Yeah. And, you know, my motivation was hearing the screen or the right. uh, howl come from over here. The sound brought you over here. Yeah. That's the only reason we're even over here right yeah. now, which I think is pretty wild. It's just unfortunate we didn't have a recorder going. We were just hanging around a campfire. Yeah, right. I mean, now it's like pretty basically falling apart, but. So, what you're saying is it was smashed when it you first like found it? It had been smashed, like hit by the, by the picture, because there was dust. It don't look like it's been like, like it is now, weathered and falling apart. Little smashings all up on the side here. Whatever it is, it's had it's pulled it up. Yeah, That's strange. It's not like a, a deer rub where you'd kind of expect to see. Yeah, you'd be more of a defined area. This is like right into that sap. I don't mm -hmm. know. Scar, it's a pretty big scar on the tree. Yeah. Whatever it was on this side too. Sap. No, it is. I don't know if it's a disease on the tree. I, I, I don't know enough. No, that looks pulled out. Yeah. yeah. It's a wound. Bears can do that, do they? I don't know why they I mean, won't. yeah, they can. But I mean, it's climbing or falling, but it's weird. It looks like the fibers have been pulled up. Pulled up. I expect yeah. to see more damage if it was a bear. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And pulled down. Right. You think? Yes. Yeah. Well, yeah. bear. I mean, I probably couldn't snap. You'd see a lot of this stuff. If it was climbing up. It would yeah. probably shave the whole side of that tree. Right. 
kind that's of That's why some of those that? saplings Fine. get bent over when a bear goes up and right. brings it right down. That's a tree bend type looking thing. That one too. Yeah. Oh yeah, whoa. This is older, yeah. It's on both sides too. Bear maybe anything's to stand up there falling or but it is weird that that one's pulled upward. Yeah. This pulled up too the same way? I don't know. Well, no, not necessarily. That's your tape right there. Yeah. It's hard to tell with this one. Yeah. What do you think? You think this one's been pulled up? Or this guy's on both sides. I mean, yeah. You scratching up? Yep. This is weird, There's right? Two sides. And another one. Another one. Yeah. Oh yeah. Right. Oh, look at that. Yeah. Well, we're the line here. Yeah. That looks for it pretty, pretty good. That one looks more. What you expect to see, yeah, like just going right up, and it's almost like it was going up because you see these sticking out. I just wonder if it's a big, big bear standing up and just like because that one has it on two sides, so maybe he went, yeah, it more. It seems kind of unnatural for a bear, though, right? Going up, going up. Well, I don't know, like I said, I don't know if it's standing up or just do that. just jump up and come down. Yeah. After we checked out the area of the rock pile and where Les had heard that strange vocalization a few years prior, we proceeded back through the marsh, and then Les showed us around the surrounding area. You see how just coming a couple miles, the, the, the terrain changes. You got the, all the water, and up where we're at in camp, there, the main bush up there is is mountain laurel. It's got them little white flowers on it. So this is this here is, is uh, rhododendron. It, it gets a pink, like purplish color. And this is actually our state flower when when it comes on. When does it bloom? I think it already has and fell off. It's spring. Oh. Yeah. Awesome uh, little creek area. Where I don't know that you would drink it, but maybe something would drink it. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, the water, it's clean water. It's just got that tannins from all the, the, the trees and the, what they call the peat. The brownish. Actually, if you go down there and scoop it out, it doesn't really look that color. I mean, oh, okay. but I don't know why. I mean, I, I guess the rocks in there, but it, it, it's it's all right. I mean, I've drank it, but you got to boil it. I'll boil it? I'd boil it, yeah. Just be safe. And I mean, let me see. If I'm if I'm stepping here, and I don't want to muddy you up, but yeah, they're just it's an impression. Yeah, and that's about the size of my yeah. foot. Probably boot print from I'd say. Yeah, boot prints. Maybe the mud settled into them. This is a right, a right print. That's left. Look here. The first one's right here. Okay. Right there. Yeah. And there's the second one. So I've got to step like that. Yeah. And, there, and then there's the next one. That's weird, man. So that one. Yeah, that's a little strange. And then here's the last one right here. So I'll try it. So this is the right? It looks like the right. The left. And the right. Yes. 
good chapter. It's not comfortable. No. <laughs> yeah, no, I can't do it. Not comfortable. Pushing on Crocs. That evening, Les had to get going, but we would stay in the area for another night, eventually deciding to head back out to the river crossing area we had scouted earlier. Ready, Jonathan? We're, we're gonna go. We're gonna go across the river onto this jeep trail that Les took us on earlier, where we found some weird-looking possible footprints. I mean, very, very hard to say, but. I think it's cool because we got to cross the river and nobody really goes up there except for you got to have a very capable vehicle. So check it out, stomp around. We got the thermals, um, just kind of see if we can stir something up. There's the primary water source for all things cryptozoological. Then we got Petikov. I think it maybe we find a quiet spot to sit down for a bit. Listen. If you get you know, maybe right up here, let's see what the hell happened. Yeah. Sean Dodd, hey. what did you think about that noise? So when we were walking up, Alex accidentally dropped his therm and something up in the woods reacted to it. That's what it felt like at least. Like a real quick, you know, stick snap kind of sound. Mm-hmm. Would you say that was accurate? What do you think? I would say that is correct. And I was filming it, so... You got sound? Yeah, it's probably not great, but... You might be able to hear that in there. We were scanning that area and didn't see anything, though. But something up there did make a noise. And it seemed like it was reacting to the therm dropping on the ground. <laughs> It's just a hill that just goes up. Yep. So that, that could be anything reacting. If we tried to replicate that, like... Drop something else? Maybe, yeah, drop something else. Or, because he also reacted, like, oh, crap. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It might be kind of cool to try to do that again. Yeah. See what happens. I could throw my headlamp on the ground. And overreact about it? Yeah. Oh, crap. Worth a shot. Yeah, hey. Nothing outside the box. Definitely something bigger than Really? How big you think? I'm trying to focus on It's either not moving or it's an it's an object, but it's giving off the heat signature of a living creature to me. 
I've seen so many rocks and there's, not, and there's almost something to the side of it. Almost looks like fire. I don't want to say it's a person down there. Does not look like it's moving now. Whatever it is, it's stationary. Something. I don't know what it is. It's it's fairly big if it's giving a heat signature from over here. Yeah, I'm seeing something. Where? Look to your right and down. Okay, I'm gonna go look now. Behind the cage? Oh, that that looks like a deer. That's a deer, all right. Yeah, it's moving from behind the tree. I think. Let's see the other object. I got this other one. There's not a squatch in these woods. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, perhaps at some points. I don't know about right now, though. Probably over the water. <laughs> Wasn't rolling. Oh yeah, there it is. Where'd he go? <laughs> Jeez, that scared me, man. That cut us off guard, man. <laughs> so we just broke down camp, but uh, as we we're cooking breakfast, Jonathan. Had a, you thought you heard something this morning? Yeah, so uh, this is where my tent was, about right here. Um, I'm guessing probably around, I don't know, five or six in the morning, I woke up and started hearing sort of like a, I would describe it as more like a, a clacking or a knocking kind of sound. And from where I was and um, sort of my position, I kind of thought that maybe it was over in that direction. And I think that's interesting because we were over there yesterday and we saw all those broken rocks. We saw, you know, a whole bunch of tree damage over there. So, I don't know, that's kind of what happened. Um, very, you know, inconclusive. Yeah. I was, I woke, you know, I woke up, you know, I was pretty tired <laughs> at the point, but I oh. thought it was at least, you know, worth it to mention. Yeah, we could see if there's anything on audio. You know, this area has a long history of stories. We didn't really experience anything out of the ordinary, but uh, it was cool to hear stories from Les, see those rock stacks over there. and Yeah, that was really cool. It was a very cool spot to hang out for a few days, so hopefully you know, we can get back here sometime and experience something more than just deer jumping out and scaring <laughs> us at night. Although we did not experience much in this location, the terrain was amazing. From rolling hills, to pine tree groves, to marshes, this wasn't exactly what I expected to see in West Virginia. One of our final nights out, we camped at a location recommended to us by a researcher who goes by the moniker Monongahela and focuses on alleged Sasquatch bioacoustics. He has a fascinating YouTube channel I recommend checking out, highlighting analysis of alleged Sasquatch audio recordings. We arrived at the location after dark, but unfortunately the camera we had used to film while we were there we ended up losing later on. But fortunately we had audio rolling and I managed to film some various critters around camp on the Pulsar Thermal Unit. Upon doing three knocks on a wooden picnic table nearby, we heard some sort of a brief, albeit distant, vocal response immediately after the knocks, which was too distant to be picked up by the audio recorder. We did not think much of it and went to bed. 
The overnight audio around camp seemed to capture quite a bit of movement, including something large walking around for quite a bit, and moving closer to the recorder and even sniffing it. This more than likely was a black bear, of which there are plenty in the area, but it was still interesting nonetheless. There was other audio captured that evening, but nothing that can't be attributed to known animals that could have been present in the area. The following morning we packed it up and headed for Sutton, West Virginia to attend the West Virginia Bigfoot Festival, being put on by the West Virginia Bigfoot Museum. I was lucky enough to be a speaker at the Researcher's Symposium part of the festival, talking about some of our Bigfoot Beyond the Trail adventures. Our approach essentially is, you know, we're out there in the woods, we really strive to tell absolutely the truth of what's going on, we are not going to fabricate stuff. Most of the time, when you're out bigfooting, 99% of the time nothing happens. You're out there, you may encounter raccoons or bear or deer, but 1% of the time when interesting things do happen, that's when, that's the kind of thing that keeps you going. We also got to listen to presentations from far more knowledgeable folks, like Dr. Jeff Meldrum and others. We've completely thrown this single look, single species hypothesis out of the out the, out the window, and now we know that you know we, we understand from the evidence that the family tree is a bush, and we keep adding branches almost on an annual basis. There are new discoveries, additional species, and so now, boom. Well, we we also noticed that or discovered that many of these lineages have persisted alongside our own, at least in the acknowledged fossil record, to remarkably recent times, as recent as 20,000 years, 10,000 years. It was a great event, but sadly it drew our time in West Virginia to a close. Overall, West Virginia seems like the ideal habitat for many woodland critters, with the possibility of a few Sasquatch scattered across its rugged landscape. Be sure to watch our previously released Part 1 of West Virginia Wild Man if you want to hear eyewitness encounter stories and retellings of other accounts from West Virginia.